This morning started like every other day with my coffee and my Bible, and I read a very familiar passage that's really one of the most familiar scriptures to most pastors and most leaders, and yet I saw something brand new, and I saw it in a way I have never seen it before. So I want to take that passage and talk for a few minutes today about freedom from fear. Fear is everywhere. Fear is ubiquitous. Fear is universal. It doesn't matter how old we are. It doesn't matter where we live in the world. It doesn't matter what time period. There is always something about fear that is attacking and approaching and tempting leaders. Here we go. Psalm 27, verses 1, 2, and 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil doers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. Now, this is just the first three verses of 14, and we'll get to the end in a moment. But as I looked at that, I saw a three-part pattern of how to fight fear, of freedom from fear. And this is David, obviously, writing this. And David had many reasons to be afraid. There were people more powerful than he trying to kill him, uh, not just fighting Goliath, but then King Saul, the head of this great army, and then the enemies that David, when he eventually was leading the army. And there was fear constantly in David's life. It is a theme of many of his Psalms. And yet he fought fear. He didn't just accept it. He didn't just hide. There was a fighting fear and we'll see how he did it. There is a gaining freedom from fear and we'll see how he did it. And here it is. As I was reading this this morning, here's what I saw. Number one, the first way to fight fear is we have to theologize. Yeah. Theologize. We have to think theologically. And what does that mean? When we talk about theology, it is the study of God. Theology, study of God. We are all theologians, just some are more serious about it than others. And so we have to study God. This first step in fighting fear we see here is answering the question who is God? What is he like and what does he do? Here's, here's how we see this in these first three verses. The Lord is my light and salvation. The Lord is the stronghold. Uh, it goes through the rest of the psalm. You'll start seeing pictures of David theologizing who is God. What is he like? What can we expect of him? And here we see light, salvation, stronghold just in the first verse. And you can unpack it in the rest of the psalm and really any psalm where you start a, a seeing the theology or the study of God. What is God like? He is like light. He is like salvation. He is like a stronghold. What does he do? He gives light. He saves. He becomes that protective. I think the other words sometimes in some translations instead of stronghold is refuge, a place we can go and be and find protection. So the starting point is that we theologize. Secondly, I want you to notice a word that's repeated twice, the word my. He is my light, actually three times, my salvation, the stronghold of my life, three times. It's not only theologize, but it's personalize. If theology is over here, but not in here, it doesn't help me. It's when we personalize. It's not just that he's light, he's my light. It's not just that he's salvation, he's my salvation. It's not just that he's a stronghold, he's a stronghold of my life. And again, this is the beginning of this psalm, but we see this pattern repeated throughout Psalm 27 and into most of the psalms of David, where it's theologize and personalize. But there's a third step. There's a third part to freedom from fear. There's a, another aspect to fighting fear. We fight fear with right theology. We fight fear when it's personal and we have a relationship with God. And then finally, the third word is we vocalize. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. There's something about speaking out. This is a psalm. This is a poem that is to be recited, memorized and recited. It's devotional literature, which for the people in that day, it would be memorized and would be part of them so that they could speak it out. It's also a song, a poem and a song to be sung, whether this is being sung 
or whether this is being recited in there's a vocal aspect to it. There's something about speaking it out. We fight fear with words, not with thoughts. We fight fear when we vocalize and we speak to these things that are legitimate reasons for fear oftentimes. So if we want to find freedom from fear as leaders, we find it when we theologize who is God? What is he like? What does he do? When we personalize, he's my God, what he is to me and my relationship with him. And when we vocalize, we speak the word right out of our mouth into the situation. And then what it says, verse three, my heart shall not fear. Ultimately, fear is a heart issue, not primarily a circumstantial issue. We can see people with situations where the logical response is to be terrified and afraid. And yet, when we guard our hearts, we see those very people not responding in fear. And so it's really about the heart. And then look at verse eight. We follow this theme as we wrap this up in verse, verse three says, my heart shall not fear. Rather, verse eight, you have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face do I seek. And so we need a heart that not, doesn't that doesn't fear in verse three and in verse eight. We need a heart that runs after God, that's after God, that seeks. And then the whole psalm ends with this. I believe, verse 13, this is again a vocalizing, a confession of faith. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. We see this always wraps back into the heart here, a heart that refuses to fear in verse three, a heart that seeks God and is telling us, our heart saying, pursue God. And then finally, this heart that takes courage as we wait on the Lord. So fear is ever present. Fear is always out there, but we can fight fear. We can find freedom from fear when we theologize, when we personalize, and when we vocalize the Word of God.